Hello, can you hear me? Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another webinar. Uh, today we have a talk by Kieran Turakia, who is going to talk about um, if packaging could talk. Kieran, over to you. Hi, good afternoon, and thank you very much, Finat, for uh, giving me the chance to uh, attend this webinar. Obviously, it's a subject that I'm totally passionate about, and you could uh, maybe replace in your mind if you're a label supplier, if packaging could talk, if labeled packaging could talk. But effectively, obviously, labels are a very strong format used in packaging. So wherever I say packaging, um, in many instances, I'm uh, really talking about a label on the pack. So thank you. Uh, my name is Karen Tarakia. Um, I've been in primary packaging all my life. Um, and uh, hopefully the screen should now move to a picture of some packaging singing <laughs> and I use uh, this uh, picture of packaging singing because basically my mantra or my uh, my focus or what's driven me for the last 30 years in primary packaging has been that actually packaging has a large value that has been uh, uh, not really being used so a, a, a hidden value that can be liberated and really all the businesses that I've been associated with has been in trying to help brands extract the value um, in, in, in label packaging. And uh, so if, if packaging could sing, I think they'd be singing a song called Mr. Cellophane, which would be really saying a bit like Mr. Cellophane, you're missing me, you're missing my value, you don't really, you, you, you could walk straight through me. <laughs> so that's been my mantra. Primary packaging, basically packaging that sells a product, things like a box of cornflakes, a label bo a bottle of uh, washing up liquid or a label bottle of Ajax or a, um, a pack of crisps. And uh, I've uh, been uh, entrepreneurial in my background, so I've been able to have uh, the ability to set up companies and run companies that basically have been centered around uh, uh, using packaging, <coughs> excuse me, using packaging more intelligently. I've run a company called Hive IP for 10 years, which has uh, got over 300 market case studies now, all helping FMCG brands use their, uh, their packaging more intelligently to run better promotions. And uh, I currently run a business as well called iPackaging Expertise, which effectively is an expertise business which helps brands and their packaging suppliers or their label suppliers go through a structured methodology to help brands and their label suppliers use packaging more intelligently and get more value from it. I've written a book, and that book's called If Packaging Could Talk, and effectively what it does is it goes through the last 10 years experience of, uh, uh, of market case studies of how we've proven to ourselves that actually um, there is this untapped value in packaging and label packaging that you can extract a media value um, and a digital value, which I'm going to try and share with you today, uh, some of them, uh, a snapshot of it on, the, on this webinar. So effectively, what is the problem that, um, that uh, labeled packaging has? Uh, um, and I've got this sketch, which is basically saying, there's more to us than meets the eye. I'm sure you all agree, if you're in the label industry or the packaging industry, the biggest problem that we have is effectively it's seen as a cost. Packaging is seen as a cost, the label is seen as a cost. How can I get that cost down? And it's not really seen as a revenue generator, uh, as an essential element to help you generate that revenue. Um, the bane of my life when I was selling packaging for over 20 years uh, or label packaging has been effectively, what's your, what's your cost? Why are you so expensive? How can you reduce your price? And the, 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 um, the frustration is it is not seen as, um, as a revenue generator. So what I wanted to do today was effectively take you through my journey um, uh, in, in, in proving to the market that, um, uh, that there's this, uh, this, this value in packaging. And I'm just going to have to move screens at the moment to uh, uh, my website, which is uh, basically um, 10 years ago, I set up a business called Packaging Media which is basically all about trying to help uh, a, a brand use their, pa their packaging as a real tangible media. Um, because I was convinced that packaging had this extra value to, to, um, uh, to, 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 to offer. 
So what I did was I looked at packaging um, and, and I thought, or, or, you know, I thought, what is it that you need to do if you want packaging to effectively be a real media? And what I found was, obviously, if you look at a box or a labeled, a labeled product, the label is trying to effectively do everything that it has to do for packaging, which is, you know, uh, uh, communicate what the brand is, what the brand is, what the product is, um, and it has very little space. Uh, to print anything else or to communicate anything else. It's usually got a space uh, constraint. So any of your label guy, label suppliers will always say, my word, I'm, I've got such a small space, I've got to fill so much information in. How can that be a media for anything else? Obviously, it's, it's a little bit of a media for the brand, but how can it be for anything else? So because I was trying to actually say there's this larger media value from packaging, what would I have to do to packaging to make it have this real media value. So I set up some systems which are basically called more inside. Uh, you should now see a screen which basically is called packaging media mechanics. And if I click on box media, effectively if you look at it, it's, there's a box here um, that, that's a standard box and everything on the box will be trying to do what it has to do, communicate the brand and the product. But what I developed was a system to effectively put a jacket on the box. If you see this separate jacket, that goes on the box. And in, in doing that, that actually then gave me um, a new area on the pack to use to communicate a separate media message. So the box builds a carrier, but by giving it an extra piece of print that you could peel and reveal, everything on the outside of the box could do what the box normally does consumer tears, and then reveals an independent piece of print. So that was box media. And clearly, any label manufacturer producing a booklet label system can effectively do that with a label. So you can make the label on the outside print everything that the packaging is trying to do, but then give a consumer a chance to tear it and reveal a large area of print or more print to communicate a separate separate message and there were various different medias that I set up obviously labels being uh, contingent to this one here's one which was called a sleeve pullout media where effectively uh, there's a label on a on a box you 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 peel it and reveal a complete independent booklet uh, which can be an independent piece of print there were other uh, similar uh, packaging formats. Here's a paper cup where everything on the outside is communicating your packs uh, and your brand, consumer tears, and reveals an independent piece of print on the inside, which can be used to effectively promote that media. So, packaging media had a series of systems, and obviously, labeled uh, booklet labels was one of them. Uh, that basically could basically make a pack look exactly the same on the outside, not take any of the print space, the precious print space needed for the brand to use it to, 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 to do the normal things that a pack's got to do, and yet give it this exciting new media space to communicate directly to the consumer. So that was extraordinarily exciting for me. I thought, wow, you've got, you've got consumers buying packs, they're holding them, they're, they're looking at them in, in, their, in their house. You now got an extra piece of print. Surely that will mean that packaging can be a media of a real, uh, a real media, an alternative to a television or an alternative to radio or a, a media to communicate what that brand is about. So what I did was is I, I went to various agencies and said, you could sell this media for me. Surely if I could get you a brand which, which, which uses this packaging format, this extra piece of space could, could, could give you some media value. Uh, and they said, yes, it definitely has value, but they weren't willing to sell the space. So what I did was I did it myself. So I wanted to share with you proof that actually packaging uh, or an extra piece of print space on packaging or a label has value. So I wanted to share a couple of campaigns to prove that. So the first one I wanted to share was, and I hope you can now see the screen, which is basically uh, a, a Waitrose a ready meal. So um, this is a Waitrose ready meal. So Waitrose had a series of uh, 
um, ready meals in their in their stores. Waitrose, is a, if you're not familiar, is an upmarket uh, food retailer in the UK, um, and uh, they they had a range of ready meals. And ready meals were uh, getting um, uh, into trouble for not being healthy. So they developed this range called Perfectly Balanced, which was arguing that actually the food was still healthy, it was just easy and convenient to cook. So we negotiated with them whether they, we could do something with them where we could use our sleeve media, so this, this, this system that offers extra print, um, and, um, and then offer that media to a, to a like-minded third-party brand that would offer something extra for the consumer and buy that media space as, uh, because they're reaching the Waitrose consumers. So here's your Waitrose uh, uh, ready meal. We actually managed to sell the media to an a upmarket uh, leisure center called David Lloyd Leisure which is all about fitness and sold you a subscription for you to uh, join their gym and their, you know, for on, monthly base, on a monthly basis. So they wanted you to try their gym if you lived in their local area. So they bought the, the, the space and said, we would love to reach uh, consumers who buy upmarket ready meals from Waitrose, uh, particularly if they're around health. Uh, and uh, we, we would like to communicate to them the chance to have a free trial over a weekend um, uh, in our gyms. So there you go, the gym saying, while you're having your ready meal and you're cooking it, why don't you look at this to here, exclusive free weekend at David Lloyd Leisure, worth over £70. Oh, that's interesting, tear it. Oh, there's a voucher for me. There's my voucher. You can have an exclusive weekend family pass worth £70. So there's an example of packaging we use as a media. So what was the value behind that media? Well, there was 550,000 boxes or, or sleeves used in this range. So 550,000 consumers bought this, this, uh, uh, this ready meal. But how many people actually saw this media and reacted enough to it to respond? 14,000 people actually tore this while they're waiting for their food to cook, read the inside, took the inside to their computer, logged on to a website, which is David Lloyd Ledger's, and actually took up the pass. What was the value of that? A typical uh, uh, leisure subscription was approximately uh, 120 pounds to 140 pounds a month. So effectively, 14,000 people per annum times 1,400 4, pounds per year meant that the value of this media for David Lloyd Leisure was over 16 million pounds of new business that they could convert thanks to the media value on this packaging. Astonishing results, just from half a million packs. So that showed to me that actually Waitrose Ready Meals had a high amount of media value. So the question is, if Waitrose as a ready meal supplier and has a large retail brand can offer that media to somebody else like a David Lloyd Leisure and they get a high value, there must be value for Waitrose themselves to use that media for their own purposes and would not have to give it to somebody else. So there's a very strong case study to prove that any label supplier who's got a booklet label, the brand could actually be using that as media and there's proof that it actually does get consumers to read it, respond to it and react to it. Here's another one. This was a box of, of, um, of, of, of cake baking kits. And here, very similar mechanic, the advertising we sold was to a leisure park called a uh, holiday leisure park called Haven Holidays. And without going into the, the detail, effectively, a red cake baking kits was an extraordinarily effective method to communicate to mothers with children between five and ten and generated media value just from a million boxes of over 1.4 million pounds. And we have several other examples like this where we run promotions or, 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 or use packaging as a, as a tangible media.
So effectively, if you can give, uh, uh, if you can make packaging have a media value using a third party, my challenge to the industry is wherever a label supplier can provide a brand a booklet label, we can give them evidence to how to extract value from that booklet label that will be worth uh, tangible media value for them and actually make them more effective at communicating what they want to communicate to their consumers. Obviously, this is a listen-only webinar, but if you fancy sending any questions to me, you know, please, be, be, you know, please send me some via the, the, the circles from Finat, and I'll be, happy, I'll, I'll be happy to answer. We sold over a million pounds of packaging media using systems like this. So there's absolutely no doubt that packaging has a much larger media value than brands are using it for at the moment. So then I wanted to talk to you about what happened in the market. All these examples are basically physical media examples, but obviously you have the digital world that was uh, coming along. So the website world, the digital world, where basically there was this whole online uh, capability uh, where brands could actually, uh, who were operating in the supermarkets, were not actually accessing how to use the tools online. So having proved that packaging had a media value, we had proven, and if I just let me scroll to um, the slides, we'd proven that effectively um, media on packaging can get consumers to read a message on the pack and can respond from, to that message and actually go online to the, the message. Yeah. So what we found was actually that there was a value in the consumer data coming online. So effectively, what I want to talk to you now is I've shown you that there's proof that packaging has a tangible media value. What about a digital media value? Well, quite simply, at Hive, what we said to brands was that if you want value out of your packaging, if you can put on your label a unique code, so an alphanumeric unique code or a scannable unique code, then we can show you how that can help you run better promotions. So effectively, any label supplier out there who's doing CPG brands or FMCG brands that can help their brand through digital printing or through um, uh, you know, uh, uh, coding machinery online, uh, if they can put a unique code on their label, the next bit of this webinar is to show you the value in that. So I wanted to take to you um, uh, a, um, a case study with Walkers uh, or PepsiCo, whereby we, we ran a promotion for Walkers, which involved a unique coded uh, pack. In fact, we had run 300 case studies, uh, which are all involved unique codes on them. But here's a promotion, it's Walkers, which is obviously like Lay's in Europe, a, lar a large PepsiCo snack food brand, and they wanted to get their consumers to buy more frequently. So, it's, so it was driven by frequently of purchase. Obviously, you can buy a packet of crisps once a day uh, or twice a day. So they wanted you not just to buy to, to participate in the promotion once, but they wanted you to participate in the promotion several times. In other words, buy uh, many more packs than one over a period of time. So their measurement of success was how many packs would a consumer buy to participate in my promotion while we run this promotion? Not just once, how many times? So I would like to ask you a question here um, and, uh, uh, and just answer for yourself. But here's a pack that basically was offering consumers to, uh, to, to win holidays. And the way they would win holidays would they have to go online and, and participate in a promotion. And the way they proved that they bought a pack would be to enter a unique code from the pack. So that was their proof of purchase. They'd go online and enter the unique code in the pack. So ask yourself a question, if there was 700,000 consumers in the UK who all responded to this pack once, how many times on average do you think those consumers came back, bought another pack, entered a code to participate in the promotion again? Send your answers in a postcard or by email to Finat and I'll tell you the real answer. You probably answered less than five. 
somebody one, somebody two, somebody three. Because of the power of the digital technology that was used and the creative used online, Walkers was able to get 700,000 consumers to enter 30 times in just six weeks. So 30 times did each individual consumer have to buy another pack, go online and enter a unique code. So they were absolutely able to prove that by having a unique code on their packaging to being the key between linking the offline and the online, they were able to engage a consumer enough to walk with their feet and buy more product and buy more frequently. Astonishing results. So that was a large brand. What about a small brand? Here's a small brand in the UK. Uh, Blue Nun Wine is a German sweet wine brand that's losing its uh, 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 market share in, in the UK. And they had a very small budget. And they wanted to drive consumers to buy a bottle of wine. But their wine didn't have a large presence in the supermarkets at all. It had a small one. It was quite difficult to find on the shelves, to be honest. There's only one in, in a rack. So they here printed a unique code on the bottle, on the label here. By running an intelligent, direct, targeted email campaign to 200,000 people in an area around some retailers, without having anything on the pack, they asked the consumer to go buy a Blue Nun pack, find it in store, come back home, enter online the unique code to prove they bought it, to get a reward worth one pound. Astonishing results. I really didn't think anyone would do that. But the, the, the email campaign, which was only to 200,000 consumers with a small budget of only 14,000 pounds, got a 4.65% sales uplift in store. Astonishing. And then we've got another case study where Anchor Butter was running a longer term uh, loyalty scheme where everything on the packs were unique, all the packs we had unique codes on, and they were able to drive extraordinary increases in, in loyalty. An average consumer was buying four butter packs a year, and they were able to increase it by set to 7.8 a year using a promotional mechanic to, 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 to incentivize them to buy another pack. So we have absolute proof that A, there's a hidden tangible print media value, and there's also a digital value. And brands and their packaging suppliers need to, need to actually get this value. So how does that, how can they do that? Why is packaging still a cost or labels just a cost? And these, 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 these values not really being extracted. You know, across the whole market, I've given you a couple of case studies, but actually 99.5% of brands are not extracting this value. Why not? Well, the first thing brands need to be is disruptive. Disruptive in the way they look at their packaging. And packaging suppliers need to help their brands do that. If I was to say to you that I'm going to build a global hotel business and not have any single investment in a hotel, you'd have probably laughed at me. But by being disruptive, Airbnb now have a global hotel business without having to build any hotels. The Uber has a global taxi business without having to build any taxis. So without you being disruptive, it's gonna, you're going to struggle to look at packaging in a different light. So what do brands need? They A, need to be disruptive. They need to believe that their labels can get them more value. But they can also, to get that, they need three things. They need commitment internally that they can extract value from their packaging. They need to show that commitment by engaging someone internally to have some time to work with partners like us to help extract that value, and they need a budget. And if they do that, I am absolutely excited that, and I have the proof that they will be singing a much more celebratory song than Mr. Cellophane uh, by liberating this value. They'd probably be singing something like Mr. Razzle Dazzle from Chicago as opposed to Mr. Cellophane. And if you come to the FinHard conference, you might even hear me sing. <laughs> so thanks very much for your time and interest um, uh, in this webinar. And thank you very much, FinHard, for letting me uh, 
communicate this and looking forward to meeting you all in person in in, in Phoenix um, uh, um, uh, 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 conference in, in Dublin. Thank you. Thank you, Karen, very much for your time and for your interesting talk. I actually have a few questions. Um, if I, as a label supplier, want to encourage my brand to look at its label as a revenue generator and not just talk about its cost, what would you suggest they do? Uh, what I would suggest is uh, it's clearly a, a, a big jump for a brand to start saying, actually, my label can be an alternative to my TV or my label can give me 10% of media value from my, like my television uh, campaign does or my radio campaign does. That's not an easy jump to make. Uh, and clearly, you know, using systems like the More Inside system is something not that easy for them to understand. So I, I, would, I would suggest that the label supplier should effectively try and do three things. Is say to the brand, do you believe that there could be, there just could be an extra value that we're missing? Yeah, there must have been that belief for Airbnb when they set up their hotel business or Uber when they set up their taxi business. So do you believe there could be that value? If you believe there could be that value, there is evidence that there is that value. Maybe give them a copy of our book, but then suggest that they, if they have some internal resource, that they engage in a structured process to extract that value. So to invest in some time internally and some time externally, uh, and we would take them through a methodology that would be able to show them that value. And the way you show value is not just by saying you must value frequency of purchase, you must value sales, you must value loyalty. Value is a completely personal thing to every brand. So you have to go through a questioning exercise to understand exactly how that, value, how that brand is valuing things and what they will pay for. So examples I gave you was walkers would pay for frequency of purchase of value. They might not pay for actually getting a new consumer because actually they have lots of sales and already they have 80% buying their product. It was all about frequency of purchase for them. And each brand has a different value metric that they will, they will want to pay for. So the main science is not actually just telling them what they should be doing. It's more about asking whether they want to extract more value that they're sitting on and saying they need to go through a methodology and a process to extract that. So first of all, what do they value? How much do they value it? What do they have to try and get that value? Would they be interested if packaging could help contribute towards that value? Can you show them some proof that there are some case studies out there that correlate that value, uh, that that is possible? And then if they believe that what you've got actually does tick that box, then running a pilot case study, a pilot test with them, and then they will see it. So, so showing value is a structured process. All right. And why do you think brands are not using their labels as a real media? Primarily because of the belief, because, you know, we all are habitual creatures and labels have never been used as a, uh, um, uh, a real media. I mean, they're, they're obviously every marketing manager will think it has some media value because it has a, its brand on it and it's sitting on a shelf. But they won't be challenging the, 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 the label as they challenge media. So they won't be saying, right, can you show me, um, uh, you know, how my label can be worth 10% uh, of the media I spend? They're not asking that question because they can't see it ever working. So it's only because um, I was entrepreneurial enough to set up a business to prove to myself and the industry that actually it does have media value. Um, I would never have believed it myself. You know, it was only by having a business that had to get advertising media value from packaging that forced that result. Um, uh, and that's why I'm saying that brands would need to uh, entertain it and sit on their head, uh, you know, from the way they think, be disruptive in the way they look at it, challenge packaging to do things they never imagined could, could be done. Okay. And um, if there was one thing you would recommend a label supplier to do, what would it be? If there's one thing I'd recommend a label supplier to do, is it would clearly be to, uh, if they want to stop labels being a cost center, would be clearly to try and uh, uh, establish with their FMCG brands, with some of their clients' um, interest, to start looking at their labels differently, uh, to, to, to uh, 
to to invest in a in, in a small amount of money to extract much more value from their uh, from their label packaging because there's a clear benefit to the label supplier because what I'm suggesting is that labels should always be booklet labels and the things that they're not and they should always have codes on them and therefore they should always be much more expensive than what they are today because primarily I think they will give much more value than their cost I think the difference in value that they can achieve compared to their cost is huge um, so any anything the label supplier can do to try and encourage that is in their interest <coughs> does that help Yes, yes, definitely. I'm also very curious to know, what was it that Walkers did to get the consumer to enter 29 codes in six weeks? Yeah, no, it's a really good question. and Because basically they have the consumer, uh, they have two things that they can do with the mechanic. One is they have a, uh, the consumer coming online using their packaging. And two is they have something unique on the packaging so they can keep sending them back. What they did without, uh, you know, uh, you know, going through, you know, it's not enough time to explain exactly, but effectively they were creative enough, their agency was creative enough to engage the consumer enough using a, a clever gaming uh, mechanic online to get them to want the codes. So they started, the consumer wanted the codes, they got into a frenzy to want to collect those codes. And the way they did it was they used the technology that there was that they had and the key technology is a unique code on the pack because that's the key otherwise they, you can't get them to go back to the pack yeah they can just they, they have to go back to the pack to get another code that's the key technology and then and then the creative uh, uh, was obviously backed up by digital technology video um, sound and, and and the ability for you to look at your website regularly so you can communicate different things to different customers so that they can all be engaged. But you're absolutely right. I mean, it's a, a science to do that. But without the unique code and without the extra print space on packs, uh, however creative you are, you're going to struggle because you always have to get them to go buy the pack again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's okay. the thing that people are missing. It's a very simple thing, a unique code on pack, but it is, it is the key to unlocking the, uh, the power of digital technology. Yeah. And speaking of digital, uh, should a label manufacturer invest in digital? Yeah, and that's a really good question. You know, it, you know, I've been in packaging for the last thirty years, and I, you know, I'm still obviously like most extraordinary disappointed uh, that the power of digital is not being used. I mean, when I speak to digital suppliers, they say that if I invest in a digital printer, it's still only really being used for two percent of what it can offer. It's you know, it's being used for uh, you know benefits like short-term printing uh, and uh, being more flexible in, in terms of printing but you know it's not being used because it can put a unique pack id on the pack it's not being used because it can every label can be different uh and uh, so yeah i mean I, i'm a great strong believer that digital is a very strong technology uh particularly if you can take them through the process of knowing that actually there's value in having a unique code on each pack or a unique number or whatever <laughs> i'm much more uh, passionate about the the, the value of digital uh, investment with that than without it. Um, but uh, any any supplier who's investing in digital clearly has a very large gap to fill to 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 extract value because they can put a unique number on every pack and every label. So it's just a question of uh, encouraging a, a structured method, uh, you know, structured process for their brands uh, to to see it. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so. Because actually, if every if every label had a digital uh, packaging supplier, then you know every pack could have a digital component immediately, and then it's just a question of of the brand seeing the value and using it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so you've shown some very interesting case studies. Um, how do we get access to some of the case studies you have complied? Yeah, I mean, the book is obviously available on Amazon and the book captures some of the case studies. But for anyone of, uh, uh, who wants to have uh, the, the, you know, the detail behind the case studies, I've, I've, I've formulated um, two videos, that are, two package videos that I sell. One is uh, uh, the unlock, uh, sorry, the, uh, uh, the unlocked physical media value of packaging. And that will have uh, three case studies like the Waitrose one that I showed you, showing you why um, uh, a label pack has a, a media tangible media value and the other is the unlocked digital uh, media value of packaging and there's three case studies showing the uh, the value of how you can use packaging to be the key 
uh, and, I, and I sell access to those effectively for, for, for people can buy those, uh, the, those those two video packages. Okay, so I have one last question for you. Uh, how much do you estimate a brand needs to pay iPackaging to help them extract more value from their packaging? Yeah, I mean, typically that's a good example. I ask brands to budget between, uh, it's probably on average around 20,000 uh, pounds, but you can probably start working from uh, 10,000 pounds up, uh, depending on the size of the brand and the, the, the ease to get to all the stakeholders and to understand their value. Most of the cost usually becomes in actually really translating what they what they value and what they're willing to pay for and what is uh, yeah that that's usually the the, the process um, so so yeah between ten to twenty thousand pounds. Okay, all right. Well, that was the the last question I got. Um, if anyone wants to ask questions, uh, Kieran will be also speaking at our uh, European Label Forum, which is taking place from 6th to 8th June in du Dublin this year. Uh, registration is still open, so uh, yeah, you are all very welcome to join. Once again, Kieran, thank you very much for your talk here, and I'm looking forward to hearing more from you uh, in Dublin. That's great. Listen, thank you very much. And thanks, guys. I'm enormously excited about this hidden value. And because I've been in packaging all my life, I'm going to keep trying to help brands and suppliers extract it just because I've been doing it for long enough. But it's, it, it is exciting uh, times ahead. And I'm hoping I'll be singing Razzle Dazzle for the rest of my days. <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye. 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 bye, bye.